Hey guys, I'm back, and we're finally making a new video. I know it's been a while, but I think you guys will appreciate this one. This is definitely one of my most requested things over the years, since anybody who has seen my orange Honda Civic that I have videos of, um, that I used to have, it's how do I make individual throttle bodies for a Honda Civic. Um, this will show you how to make your own individual throttle bodies and what you're going to need to do it. So let's just kind of get into what you're going to need to, what materials you're going to need and what parts you're going to need. So first, um, main thing here is we have throttle bodies from a, from a, uh, from a Honda CBR 900 or 954RR. Um, either one, either one of those will work just fine for you. But these are the throttle bodies you need. Try to get them with the fuel rail, all the vacuum lines, and try to get them as complete as you can, if you can. Uh, they're really cheap. I picked the, these, this particular setup for, uh, I think it was 50 bucks on eBay. Uh, next thing you're gonna need is I've got a 316 steel plate. Uh, there are ways to get around this, but I'd rather make my own flange and runners. Uh, you could cut up a stock manifold and just use rubber grommets to connect it from the runners to the throttle bodies, but it just looks ugly and it's not, it's just not very good looking. So, we're going to make our own. This is a 3 steel plate, and then these four uh, pieces of the steel tubing right here. Uh, one and five eighths inner diameter, inner diameter steel tubing. Uh, these are for the runners, and we've also these are the OEM rubber connectors that connect to the end of the throttle body to the runners. I recommend picking up a set of those. They're they're what's going to seal the best, and you definitely don't want any vacuum leaks on your ITBs. You're also going to need cutting wheel, drill drill bits, grinding disc, cutting disc, I got a flat disc just to smooth some stuff out, and then you're definitely going to need a welder. So let's go ahead and get this started, and I'll show you guys where to start. Oh, one other thing, you're also going to need one and a half inch hole saw. Alright. So first things first is we're going to start making the flange to weld our runners onto. Kind of what you're going to want to do is the easiest way is to take the um, intake manifold gasket, lay it out. By the way, this piece of 316 steel is 3 by 14, and this fits perfectly for a D series, uh, pretty much all D series intake manifolds. So it's 3 by 14. It gives you a little bit of extra room on each end to work with. Um, but yeah, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to trace this on here. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can lay it down and do a quick run over. Not heavy, but really light with spray paint so you get the areas where all the bolts are. Or you can just trace it with a Sharpie. Um, when you do it with a Sharpie, you do have more of a chance of moving things around as you trace it. And so some bolt holes can end up not lining up. Um, so, but I'm going to leave it up to you how you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, get that traced out, and then the next step is to kind of start cutting it out. But like this big dip right here, you don't really have to cut that out, and these dips right here, you don't have to. You can to make it look better, but you don't have to get rid of these huge sections. It's a lot of extra work. Uh, I definitely would take off these corners and stuff, make it look a little nicer, and then under here. But this whole middle section and these top sections where they dip in, you know, that's just extra work. It's up to you whether or not you want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and trace that, and we'll start getting it cut out. So here I've got the general shape of what I want traced out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my cutting wheel and cut all these little sections out. And then for these little areas, I'll probably use the grinding wheel. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, so here I have the general outline pretty much done. 
Looks pretty decent. Um, I'm just going to go over it with a flat disc and smooth all the corners out and everything. But um, these areas right here definitely are not fun to cut out with a cutting wheel. Um, now I think the next step I'm going to take is I'm going to start drilling out all the mounting holes. And once I can get this plate to mount on the cylinder head, I'm going to start cutting out the holes for the runners. And I'll show you guys the whole process for that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start drilling these out and get it fitted to the head. <coughs> Alright, so I've got all my mounting holes drilled out and uh, I test fitted it on the cylinder head. By the way, it really helps to have a spare cylinder head to slide this onto and make sure all these holes are lining up. It just really helps. Uh, but it does fit. Got all these holes drilled out. So the next step is we just got to drill out the holes for the runners. And that's what this one and a half inch uh, hole saw is for. And it's with the ITBs we're going to be running completely circular runners. Just like this. Just like, uh, you know that. So this shape right here, this top part, is normally for where the uh, fuel injector goes and spray the fuel in. So what we want to do is we want to line this up to as perfectly as we can fit within the bottom portion of this uh, intake plate um, and then we'll cut the holes there as centered as we can within this bottom portion and then just do that on all four and after that we gotta drill out and cut out this uh, port for the coolant um, and then after that I'll show you what to do next so I'm going to go ahead and drill these out and also get this drilled out but before you drill don't drill this yet I'll wait until you watch the next part and I'll tell you about drilling this so I'm going to go ahead and do these okay so here we are um, this is basically finished except for this one little coolant uh, uh, this one little area where we gotta put a hole for the coolant to flow through uh, the reason I say uh, to wait till this part to drill it out is because that has to be exactly the size this hole. So you need to go out and you need to get a drill bit that's exactly the size of this hole because we're going to be taking this coolant fitting and pulling it out of this intake manifold and sliding it into that flange. So just make sure you get a drill bit that's exactly this size. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly what it is right now. I'm actually about to go get one. So once I get back I'll let you guys know and we'll get that hole drilled. Okay, so here is the finished intake flange. I smoothed out all these edges with a flat, desk, fl flat disc. And then um, after I weld, I'm going to go in, I'm going to dremel out all these ports, smooth them out. Um, and then I've got this hole drilled out to the right size for the coolant outlet. Um, the only other really difficult part is getting this piece out of uh, the intake manifold down here. It just press fit in there and it is really difficult. I just vice gripped it and pulled and twisted it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it worked its way out. But um, later on I'm going to press fit that in there with uh, some JB weld. But right now our next step is actually to weld the runners onto here. So I'm going to grab the throttle bodies and then we're going to connect the runners to the throttle bodies and then mock them up on here, tack them in place, and then after we pull the power bodies off, we'll fully weld them. Hopefully not warp our flange, and then we'll pretty much be finished besides painting. So let's go ahead and get that going. Okay, um, so I got my runners tacked into place on here. All I did was I took the throttle bodies and the rubber couplers, and then I just slipped all the runners into the couplers. And then the, the middle two, 
they line up perfect. This is for a D-series, by the way. They line up perfect for the D-series manifold in the middle. And these two, you just barely have to angle out the slightest bit. And then everything lines right up. So, yeah. Um, should have cleaned this off. But um, got everything welded or tacked into place. So next, I'm just going to pull the throttle bars off and then weld a little... Uh, a fourth at a time on opposing ends just to try and minimize uh, warping and I'm also going to take a lot of time in between welds just to try and minimize warping as well so um, I'm going to go ahead and get this started and we'll see what it looks like when I finish welding all this up okay so here's the finished thing right here all we have left is to um, press fit this little coolant port but I'm going to do that at a shop and just press it into there. Um, but other than that, the only thing left to do to this is paint it. And that's it. My welding is still not good, but getting a little better. But yeah, that's it. And just the only thing I got to say is make sure you go through all these. Um, make sure you got no no air leaks because that will cause a big headache in the end you have to pull everything back apart especially if you painted it it's just a huge headache so just go through make sure you have no air leaks around your runners and then we're going to move on to the next step which is mounting the throttle bars on here and getting this pressure fitted but really I think that will be a, a separate video this is the whole flange finished right here hope you guys like that um, I'll probably, actually I'll probably go ahead and get this fitted in here before I end the video so you guys can just see and then we'll paint it up. So we'll move on to another part I guess. Alright, so here's kind of where we are now. I took that heater hose connection out of the old intake manifold and like I said I drilled that hole out right there to pretty much the exact size and then press fit it in and I also took some JB weld and just put it all around the edge in a bead just to be a little safer obviously you just want to do what you can to make sure you got a good connection on there so um, <clears throat> next thing is we need to go through all these and use a die grinder or whatever you want to use a Dremel to get rid of all little edges smooth out the uh, transition to the runners and just kind of clean everything up in there so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm gonna clean this all up and then after we get all those where we uh, cut the holes for the runners all cleaned up I'm gonna we're gonna go ahead and paint this thing so let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and get that finished here's the uh, finished flange uh, just before painting I've gone through everything smoothed out all everything on the inside all the sharp edges everywhere uh, we got our coolant uh, their heater hose connector put on there I press fit it and then I also put JB weld around it just to kind of keep things a little safer other than that everything's ready to go it's all been test fitted on a spare cylinder head that I have uh, if I haven't already mentioned that, I like I said, I it's a lot easier to have a spare cylinder head to kind of test fit this on as you go along to make sure everything's good. You don't need to massage any of the holes for the bolts or anything with a grinder or anything. But uh, yeah, as of right now, it's ready to be painted. And then after we paint it, we're going to move on to the small things we have to do to the actual throttle bodies. And then uh, it's pretty much ready to go. So we'll go ahead and finish that up real quick. Okay, so this is the finished and painted intake manifold. It's pretty much ready to be bolted on the car. So all we gotta do is put some spacers in between the fuel rail and put the stock single cam fuel injectors and the throttle bodies and we should be ready to bolt everything on. Alright, so we're on to the next step. And that's going to be taking the fuel injectors out of our stock manifold and fuel rail 
and swapping on swapping them into the CBR throttle bodies. They fit right in except for you're gonna need some nylon spacers here. I'll let you guys know once you get these swapped over. I couldn't remember if it was eighth inch or quarter inch, but I'll tell you in just a moment. So I'm gonna get these injectors swapped over and show you what you need to do. Okay, so now I've got the two fuel rails off of each manifold. Um, when you pull this off of here, or pull this rail off of here, make sure these little rubber rings stay on this, on the throttle bodies. So when you put these injectors in, you have no leaks. We'll go ahead and swap these injectors onto this rail with the connectors facing the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll move on to the next. I have the uh, injectors all switched over here now. They literally just slip right into the fuel rail, no issues. Now we're going to slide it in here, and then these nylon spacers right here, they're going to go in between the fuel rail and the throttle bodies, because these injectors are just a tiny bit longer. So we're going to go ahead and get that swapped over, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so got our fuel injectors <coughs> put in. It only takes one quarter inch uh, spacer. This is just a quarter inch nylon spacer I got from the hardware store, um, which also means you're going to need bolts that are a quarter inch longer, at least. So uh, go ahead and do that. Grab some longer quarter, uh, some longer bolts for it. But that's it. That's pretty much all you need to do. I was going to run my fast idle thermal valve here for like a high idle warm up but I guess in shipping this piece got snapped off so I'm just not going to use it. So if you don't plan on using this either go ahead and disconnect the little arm down here. Um, this is just like your high idle valve. Uh, if you don't have it it's not a huge deal. It just makes starting it um, a little nicer because it's going to idle higher and warm up a little quicker on its own. But at this point, these pretty much just need to be stuck back onto the manifold we just finished making and it's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get these kind of set up and ready to go and I'll show you guys the finished product of everything. So our next step here to get the throttle bodies ready to go is we have our air box. Pretty sure I previously mentioned that. I hope I did. But you need an air box. And you cut out this right here. I just finished cutting it out with a Dremel. Um, obviously going to clean up all these edges. But you need to clean these out because they go in between the velocity stacks and the throttle bodies. And like your little idle air channels come through these, this little slot right here. Um, I put on a set of these before without it. And it just kind of sounded kind of funky. So I hope so with these it's going to sound a little better so um, yeah I'm going to go ahead and cut this other one out and then get it mounted on the throttle bar. so here's the finished product guys these are the finished ITBs mounted on the runner and the plant runners and flange that we made um, like I said the TPS just clips right on it's the same you just need to switch the inside and outside wires because it goes the opposite direction We've got all the vacuum lines running up to this uh, vacuum block, vacuum log right here, going to the brake booster and the map sensor. And everything's working so far. I've done quite a bit of tuning. You definitely need to tune your ECU if you're going to try to run ITBs. Uh, this motor also has a uh, Delta 272 camshaft, and it also has um, Brian Crower valve springs. So. Um, I'll go ahead and start this up for you guys so you can see what it looks like and sounds like running. There we go, it's about to start it up. As you can see, it runs pretty good. It sounds great. I've been daily driving on these for 
think four days now. Sound awesome, runs great, so it's definitely all about getting the tune right, but this is just to show you these ITVs definitely work. There's no issues with them. Uh, if you need any, any more information, feel free to comment. Thank you for watching, as always. Have a great day. Please comment, like, and subscribe.